Sweet niblets and ye doggies, everybody. It's Billy Ray Cyrus here to narrate the entirety of this Pokemon battle for my good friend and confidant, BKC. Fun fact, he is actually a genius. He wrote the legendary track, Achy Breaky 2. I love you, Kev. Keep doing what you're doing, buddy. And I'm not going to do that. As I'm sure you would have loved however long this video is going to be, just me doing that wonderful, wonderful accent that's not offensive to anybody. But the that's my April Fool's joke. You're welcome. And today we are going to be looking at one of the greatest advanced games that I have ever seen. This was for the finals of the first Pokemon Perfect Advanced Tournament of 2020, ever since it was revamped by Kallus. So, new circuit. And wouldn't you know it, the two players in the finals are none other than arguably the two best advanced players out there, Asta Matitos and the Linear Curve, seen here as my prehensile trunk. So, uh, this is game one of that series, and... Yeah, we are going to get into it now. Fuck, sorry. <laughs> I forgot I had done an audio test, so I gotta go back. Good start. Alright, so... We're gonna go into it now. So... Linear leading Milotic, Asta leading Metagross. So, these days, Milotic is just about never seen without at least one Trapper, Magneton or Dugtrio. And that's just about all you can suss out from what the style of team it's going to be is. Because you can have Dugtrio stall, you can have Magneton stall, you can have double trap stuff, Milotic fits nicely on those. You can have physical offense, and that's generally it. Whereas Asta's Metagross, that usually implies offense of some kind. Uh, whether it's Magneton offense with uh, physical gross, possibly with HP grass, or if it's mixed offense with either a choice band or a mixed gross, who knows. So, yeah, depending on their teams and how they want to play it against these threats, a lot of different things can happen. The default is for choice band metagross to just blow up immediately because uh, Milotic doesn't get paired with Gengar very much on account of the stall teams it features on already needing all their slots to cover things defensively, and it's less about abusing spikes offensively with Gengar and less about having a good defensive core. So, uh, Choice Band Metagross would be pretty safe to boom on Milotic and take out either Milo, who's incredibly annoying to offensive teams, or Skarmory, which is also a boon. And if it's just a non-Choice Band set, it's probably not going to boom right away because you thought against Skarmory and do nothing. Not that great. Whereas for Milo, then it can surf just because uh, he might want to say, well, if it's going to be boom, it's going to boom. And I would rather have Skarmory than Milotic. I can play around things with Milotic depending on if I have things like Blissey for Mixments and a way of playing around Mixtar like Dugtrio. So he doesn't want to risk anything. So just play straight ahead and surf. Or. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You're probably going to see a Surf from Milotic on the first turn. So, Asta switches to Blissey, so... Probably not... I mean, it could be a Choice Band Gross, but it's also fairly likely that it would have boomed. So, not ruling it out, but odds are a little lower. And it's also likelier that this is going to be some sort of Spikes team. So, we know that, and we see Milotic go for a Hypnosis. Now, this means that it's not running the standard Toxic Refresh set. So that is making the likelihood of a more traditional Milotic stall team less likely. And this will also probably be a more offensive team because whether it's like pure offense or uh, the Magneton variety or a trap team, those abuse Milotic sleeping things a lot more. Whereas something like a Magneton or Dugtrio stall team has the resilience to last a long game and wants Toxic Refresh Milotic to wear down other Pokemon and also uh, be able to withstand status itself. It's not really about abusing the ability to sleep things, so 
Um, that's where we're going from here. Offensive Milotic team to abuse Hypnosis and some sort of spike stuff from Asta. So, uh, very likely this is going to be at least a Magneton, if not Magneton and Dugtrio for a full trap team uh, by the rationale we've just gone over. So, yeah. Celebi comes in, and that is a dead giveaway to Magneton, or even more of a dead giveaway, as Blissey just goes for a Toxic, as if Milo wants to stay in and Hypno, then it is risking getting Toxic, and it's probably not going to have Refresh, because more offensive team, you need more offensive weapons. So, Celebi uh, sets up Magneton beautifully with Leech Seed and Baton Pass, baiting in Skarmory, and for a physically offensive team, and then it, uh, even if T-Tar comes in on Celebi, then you baton pass out to something like Metagross that scares the T-Tar out, and that forces in the Skarmory more likely. And if the water comes in uh, to face the Metagross, then Metagross threatens to explode on it, and then that can be abused by a Pokemon like Dragon Dance Salamence. So, uh, there's that. And the likelihood of Dugtrio is lower because Milotic Celebi Magneton kinds of offense, that's good. That's a more known style of team. It's tough to fit Dugtrio on this thing, so... Uh, I mean, a couple of years ago, or many years ago even, then it would have been feasible for this to still be a double trap team, like uh, Milo Celebi, Choice Band Salamence, Magneton, Dugtrio, Snorlax. That was a very popular team uh, by Make. But nowadays that style is not as common, so I mean... I suppose it's still a possibility that Dugtrio is there, but nowadays uh, I think most players would expect the Magneton, Metagross, Snorlax style of team a lot more. So uh, lean toward it, let's call it 60-40, maybe a little more, a little less in favor of the Magneton offense style. So we're about to see what kind of Celebi this is, kinda. We see Baton Pass, which we could have assumed already, so we still don't know if it's a Leech Passer, which is more likely on um, Double Trap, or a Swords Dance Passer, which would be for Magneton Physical Offense. I've never seen Swords Dance Pass Celebi and Dugtrio on the same team, so... Uh, because Dugtrio kind of goes against the whole style of Swords Dance Pass Celebi. It's, you're not, you don't need to trap things like Tyranitar and Blissey when you're Swords Dance passing to physical attackers. So, uh, yeah, and Swords Dance Celebi still can run a lot of different moves. It can also run Leech Seed to throw the opponent off, so, uh, yeah, so we see Baton Pass, we see Snorlax come in because it is immune to Toxic and shrugs off Blissey's moves and there's no Sandstorm, so it'll stay at full health. It's not going to get worn down quickly. So the obvious move, well, Asta has a couple moves. He can go to Metagross, he can go to the Skarmory he very likely has. If he's got a Gengar, now would be a good time to go to it because it avoids Earthquake and Focus Punch and just the straight ahead Body Slam. And uh, Linear could Shadow Ball because he's known for making crazy moves like that. And it, it's not just crazy like he's out of his mind clicking random things. He has very strong rationale for doing those things. Uh, and that rationale would be, if there's a Gengar, it's coming in here, and if Skarm comes in, I'm just going to Magneton it anyway. So, uh, Focus Punch lacks a lot less likely on a Magneton team. I should mention that. It's going to be Earthquake. Focus Punch is for when you want to break down Skarmory without the help of Magneton. So, uh, almost surely going to be Earthquake, and Earthquake is a good move here for Metagross and Titar, and if Skarm comes in, then you mag it anyway, and if Gengar comes in, then he's going to have a full health Celebi outside of sand, so for now, it'll be fine. So, uh, Asta goes for a Fire Blast there, and that was aimed at the double switch to Magneton, which also was a completely reasonable move Linear could make, and uh, because if he goes to Skarm, then he could potentially shut it down without it getting any spikes at all. And if Metagross comes in, no harm, no foul. Generally, Blissey does not like to stay in there, so Asta mixing up his moves to be less predictable, and that can be really important down the stretch. And Linear just goes for the straight-ahead body slam. He's not concerned with predicting Metagross or T-Tar. 
he's looking for paralysis, because if he paralyzes those guys, great, that can really help later. And uh, it's less prediction reliant, and potentially you can even mess up Skarm without getting any spikes with some really good luck. But yeah, so he gets a body slam on the Blissey. So far, it doesn't seem to be a problem. Blissey is still useful against physical offense because it is a great check to DD Mence. Although with it generally relies on being at full health, so it doesn't just crumple the two HP flyings, especially in sand. So that's something to keep in mind, but it's likely it's going to have plenty of opportunity to heal up against Milotic and Celebi. So now Asta's definitely not risking staying in, and he gets out of there and goes to the Metagross, and now Linear pops the Earthquake. So we see it's a more offensive Metagross, as defensive uh, sets take less than half from uh, that EQ. So good move from Linear, but he's probably not going to want to chance the Snorlax just yet. He could even potentially make a cheeky move and go right to Magneton on Meteor Mash, because if it's Magnet and it's an offensive gross, then it is well within uh, Thunderbolt range right now. And what's especially nice is that he knows that if he's Timid Mag, he's going to be faster because the only Jolly Metagross sets are the ones with uh, that Asta actually invented with uh, Salak Berry, and since he's got leftovers, that possibility is no longer a thing. But he's also likely he can just throw, go to Milotic and just play it safe. So Asta goes to Skarmory and comes face to face with the Gyarados, the counterpart to Milotic, so that's some cool thematic stuff going on. But uh, more importantly, he decides, uh, Linear decides to reveal Gyarados not to intimidate Metagross. Metagross has clear body, so it would not get intimidated. But more to suss out an earthquake, perhaps. Um, maybe he felt that Milotic could potentially be more valuable than Gyarados if he's getting ready to boom it. Actually, the more realistic uh, explanation for earthquake besides chipping Milotic is I want to hit a potential Magneton switch. So he was aware of that possibility. So that was a great move from Linear. And also a great move from Asta, because he was like, well, I'm not going to just stay around dicking around here. I mean, there is some element of risk to going right to Skarm if you're also fearing a Magneton switch into Metagross, but it's also still not the easiest move to make, because if you just get Earthquake for nothing, then you are probably boned, so uh, he went to Skarm to get some up on the Milotic, so... He's going to go to Tyranitar, and here is where we see an absolutely insane move. Linear knows that we're going to go back. So, Linear knows, in this scenario, that Asta is wary of his Magneton. As if you could not get more obvious that there's a mag here with Snorlax and Gyarados alongside Milotic and Celebi. Uh, yeah, there's 1,000% a Magneton. So, Asta is wary of it, and it's likely that he tries to get something going before he just gives up the Skarm to get the spikes down. So whether that's a uh, Magneton or a Dugtrio from him, uh, not as likely with Metagross, but very possible. Or if he just goes to Tyranitar, then that's fine. So th then that's also good because he gets his sand up, so Snorlax, especially Snorlax, is going to be harassed heavily. And Selby and Milotic and even this Gyarados are going to be a lot more troubled by it. So he wants to get sand, he wants to get some damage going before he gets his spikes down. So that was the move there. And Linear is aware of this and he uses Earthquake against Skarmory and hits Tyranitar. Incredible move. That also would have wiped a Magneton off the face of the planet. Dugtrio gets slammed really hard. Uh, it's depending on if it's Adamant or Jolly Gyarados. Jolly Gyarados is used with HP Rock to outrun Arrow and Jolteon after a boost, and also kill Arrow with HP Rock and do a lot to Zapdos, but standard HP Flying would run Adamant, and that is a roll to kill. Uh, well, they're all rolls to kill, but Adamant has a much better roll to kill, Bulkless Doug. So, and of course it hits Tranitar too, so that was a fantastic move, and even if Asta spikes playing straight ahead, then it's not a big deal because his main sweeper is Gyarados, who is Spikes immune. And he could also very well have a Salamence in the back, so same thing. Because Magneton on this kind of team is not trying to kill Skarmory the Spiker. I mean, obviously, yeah, it helps, but it's also trying to kill Skarmory the Wall. 
and the phaser so that Celebi can pass some swords dances on it because now that we've seen Snorlax and Gyarados, there's definitely some swords dance pass stuff going on. Almost definitely. I would... It's significantly in Swords Dance Passer's favor as opposed to a standard Leech Passer set. Because that's what gets the offense going. It makes Gyarados really scary. Gyarados sometimes struggles with its lower attack stat. I'm making it come up just short with uh, against things like Metagross with Earthquake, but with a Swords Dance Pass, no dice. So, that was a great move. And he also has noticed that Asta is trying to be... He's trying to play carefully around it. Because he, uh, from the Fire Blast on Lax, he's trying to catch that mag, so he said he's going to try and do it again. He's not going to just give up Scar immediately. He's going to have to eventually, but just not yet. And he made the great move, and it worked out. So now, Asta is still in a pretty decent spot, all things considered. Both players are in decent spots, but... Uh, what Asta did is an example of how great Tyranitar is in advance, because even when Tar does nothing, it does something by virtue of Sandstream. Because now, Snorlax, even if it switches into that Blissey Fire Blast, which did a whopping 16%, uh, that's relevant chip for later in the game. Whereas before, it got shrugged off. And it also forces more recovers from Selby and Milotic, which allows for switches against them. So now, we are in a... So that's Sandstream for you, but now we are in a tighter spot because here's the big question. Is Linear going to keep up the aggression and go right to Mag on Asta's Skarmory, or is he just going to play it straightforward in Earthquake? It's tough. You could say different things for both because you could say, well, obviously Asta is forced to go back to Skarm lest he lose his Tyranitar for nothing and uh, then loses Skarm to Mag, so he's obviously going to preserve the Mag, and therefore you obviously want to go to Mag. On the other hand, you could also make the argument that Linear is clearly not bothered by the prospect of Skarm getting a spike. He just wants to get it as close as possible, and he also is aware that Asta wants to play aggressively around the possibility of his Mag, so uh, he didn't chance it on Metagross, and this is less of an obvious safe magneton switch relatively safe at least so you could go either way but uh, i don't i don't think you could say that anything that either player does is a wrong move it's just a matter of feeling the opponent out and deciding how they themselves want to play it so he goes to milotic and asta goes back to skarm so that milotic switch I'm not, I know Linear had a good reason for doing it, but I am not quite certain what it might be. Uh, one possibility is that it's a Rest Gyarados, and it's really slow, and he was afraid of a Jolly DD Tar. Because uh, Rest Gyarados needs a lot of bulk, so it can live things like Starmie, Thunderbolt, and Sand. And it tries to get several DDs, so it doesn't need immediate speed. So he could have been afraid of that, and he decided to just check it safely with Milo. And I think that's the one that makes the most sense, because that Earthquake did a pretty nice chunk to Tar, and he didn't have lefties, so very possibly a fast set. And that's the one that makes the most sense to me. Generally, on an S however, I'm not entirely sure, because on an SD Pass Celebi team, then you are not going to be going for a Rest Gera approach. You are going to be looking more to sweep immediately with extra coverage from Double Edge and HP Flying and just... Yeah, so... Uh, not sure. Uh, Milo also covers a Gengar switch, so that's very possible. Uh, because Gengar both covers Gyarados' second Earthquake and it prevents Skarmory from getting trapped on the switch by Magneton. So he could have continued to play the game out from there, see what he can do. So, Milotic is not a perfect Gengar counter, but in a one-on-one, -on -one, when it's perfectly healthy, then, yeah, that was a good switch. So, I, I believe those are the rationales. I think the Gengar possibility switch is more plausible than a, um, than a pivot to... Then the possibility of slow Resgara feeling jo fearing Jolly DD Tar. It could be Jolly DD Tar from Asta for sure. It could also be Choice Band. It could be mixed. Um, what else? Oh, there's also the possibility of Asta pivoting into a Salamence or an Aerodactyl 
and Milotic would have had a great matchup against those two. So, uh, very nicely done. I, I see it now. I've reasoned it out. So that that makes sense. He was. It, it covers both. Uh, it covers the common earthquake pivots that Asta could have gone to without risking Skarm on Mag. And Asta has some great foresight because he goes to Skarm anyway. And he's like, well, he's not making that mag move. He's EQing and uh, works out here. So, good move from Asta. He figured Linear's not going to be trying to catch Magneton, uh, catch Skarmory at all costs. He just wants to get it down. He's not going to be risky about it. So, and it's also actually kind of important that Asta gets Skarmory in. The sooner the better, because the longer he drags it out, then the more Linear is going to have situations like Snorlax against Blissey where Skarmory is basically forced in and he can potentially double the mag there and Skarm wouldn't get any spikes at all so definitely the one spike goes a long way in games like this uh, chipping down Snorlax chipping down things like even Heracross uh, so gotta be careful about that and because if he doesn't get spikes, I mean, the game's not over, but it's overwhelmingly in Linear's favor, whereas that one layer is a uh, sort of balancing act, kind of. So he wants to get Skarm in before Linear decides, all right, well, I'm, I'm going to double switch it in now. So, uh, is he going to spike? feel like he's got to spike because he's not getting anywhere by just switching around. And if he goes to Blissey to try and heal up and Lax comes in, then... That's what we just talked about, the Magneton coming in off the double switch. So, he's going to get the spike. He is faster than Milotic and takes a buttload from Surf. So, Linear once more unconcerned with the spikes and just wanting to Surf. Uh, if Blissey comes in, he can potentially Hypnosis it and then proceed to cause havoc. And he just surfs down, so Asta will now at least get a second layer. So that surf does so much that this reveals itself to be a bulkless Skarmory, as we will see in this calc. Yep, so uh, he gets the spikes and he's fast, so he's also... If he's that bulkless, that means he's HP ground. Now, it's not as safe a bet against Linear's Magneton, because a lot of Magneton these days are timid exactly for HP Ground Skarm, which needs to run Adamant to guarantee a KO. So, could Asta be running Jolly? Some people have actually tried that. Not Soft Sand, just Jolly, just because it's still a good roll. And with Magneton running less bulk when running Timid, then it helps, especially because Timid Magneton often doesn't run max speed. They like to have some bulk in their just to shrug off things like Zapdos Thunderbolt. So, and they often feel they don't need max speed, although some people do max speed exactly for it. But all, a lot of Tim and Magneton also run HP Fire, so Jolly Skarm would be faster. Same rationale as Adamant Skarm out running modest HP Fire Magneton. Fun fact, the guy who brought Adamant HP Ground Skarm into the limelight is Linear himself. So, uh, he's gonna get this. Anyway, back to the game. So we're gonna get the Ass is gonna get his spike, his second spike potentially, which isn't that good. But ideally, he gets it in later and gets all three layers, because that's something you can probably count on. And even then, just two is nice because two layers of spikes. Oh, think about it like this: a sand immune Pokemon shrugs off one layer of spikes in two turns with leftovers. So Swampert and Metagross, but with. Uh, with uh, two layers, then you do slightly more, and that can be big if Asta's got a bunch of physical attackers trying to sweep in the back, or just any kind of cleaner. A every percent can be big. So, problem is that he does not want to stand to take this second surf, because it has a very good chance to kill, as you see from that calc. However, uh, he's probably going to have a chance to come in again later, so... Oh, and also the YOLO Skarm, as Linear calls it, is Spikes Taunt Drill Peck HP Ground, so it's not going to be able to phase Celebi, so that could be key later too. But it's likely Asta just switches here, and he does. He goes back to Blissey. He's about half, so uh, Linear can play it safe and go to Snorlax, or he can go for the Hypnosis. Or he can go to Celebi and start setting up, since he knows the Skarm is zero bulk. 
so he's gonna... A lot of choices here, because if he Hypnos Blissey, then keeping it low can be big, because even just uh, Toxic on Gyarados can be nasty, so... And, of course, Asta has no choice but to go for Soft Boiled. Uh, well, or so I thought, <laughs> because that is what you would assume, but he wants to keep it healthy, right? But this could reveal to us that he's got some good physical checks in the back, and he's less concerned with dealing with keeping Blissey around as much as chipping things like Celebi and Snorlax to go for a clean. So a very heads-up move by Asta. I think a lot of players would have just soft-boiled it there. Uh, and yeah, that, so that, that was heads-up. And he's also got to deal with Hypnosis missing because it is not accurate. So that Ice Beam, its le I mean a freeze would be a nice byproduct, but it's more about the chip damage. And uh, even the chip damage, Sandstorm sticks to Milo, that could be big too for a late game cleaner. So, he's going to hit the Hypno on Blissey this time, and now he's going to switch out to Celebi, Snorlax, maybe Metagross. So the question is, does Asta want to... Uh, he wants to keep up offensive momentum, because now that the spike is up, and he's probably going to have to deal with another spike later at minimum, if not two more layers, then he's probably going to want to start being more aggressive with his offense here, as opposed to just, you know, the kind of cautious game he's played so far. He's got a lot of information, not quite enough to be 100% certain about things, because these last two Pokemon could be a lot. They could be Gengar, Ments, Arrow, Swampert. Those are the likeliest candidates. And... Uh, so he's probably going to want to be more aggressive as opposed to the earlier game where he would have preferred to you know, surf and feel him out. So I think Asta, it's still going to be a tough switch to make, but he can be a little more secure in switching here to try and catch, try and get a one-up on the Snorlax or Celebi switch. Like Metagross here would be really nice, but it's also a really tough trigger to pull. So he might just try to stay in and wake up. Uh, just to not chance things. And turns out, Linear is still going to be cautious. He's not worried about that spike yet. He goes for the Surf. And Blissey stays in and uh, burns the sleep. So now he's going to switch to Metagross. And Asta remains asleep. So three turns. And now he's going to be forced out by the meta. And you see here that one more turn of lefties. And he's going to be back at full. So that could be the significance of a second spike. As right now... Uh, Asta's team is chipped, and, you know, all four of his revealed Pokemon are at around half health, or are at around or less than half health, so Metagross is looking really, really dangerous right now, so Linear set this up nicely. So, Blissey switches out, and Asta reveals his Swampert, which takes a buttload from that mash, but it's not banded gross, so this is an offensive Swampert. And specifically, it's going to be Endeavor, because he had, does not have leftovers. So he has Salic Berry, and the moveset Substitute, Endeavor, Hydro Pump, feasibly Surf, but probably Hydro Pump, and then the last move, Roar, or Ice Beam. Roar is nice because for Recover Spammers, then you just roar them out, and then they have to predict whether you're going to Hydro Kill whatever you roared out to, like Tyranitar, or if you're going to endeavor them on the switch from, and you're going to be at low health, and then they would just die. So, potentially forces some really nasty situations. Secondary phase is always nice, so. Asta's running a blissy backbone, but he's running a very offensive spikes team. And this is a st really strong style. It uh, has a lot of offensive synergy, but it doesn't fold in the face of special attackers like Moltres and Starmie. So... Uh, he's going to be threatening this Metagross out now, because Linear's Metagross is clearly extremely threatening. And he's got some good answers to it, and Milotic and Celebi, just one of them is enough to really trouble Swampert. So, I don't think he's going to risk it. And the question is, what's Asta going to do? Is he going to go back to Skarm and look for that extra layer of spikes? Is he just going to sub up and start some Endeavor Roar games? We'll see. Linear actually does not keep his, uh, continues to keep his switches unpredictable as he goes to Gyarados. So, he's, it, this reminds me of how Aerodactyl plays sometimes, because Aerodactyl, uh, there's an expression, its health is always at full until it's at zero. 
right? So it's kind of like, as long as it's alive, then it's going to be enough to sweep. Now, with Gyarados, that's not quite the same, but because it, you want some... Gyarados has good typing to be neutral with things like Ice Beam. It's one of its advantages over Salamence, and good bulk, so you want it to be around to take hits. But he... Uh, but at the same time, he doesn't need it to be in pristine condition. And I think that Gyarados switch was really heads up, because as opposed to the more predictable Milotic or Celebi switch, then he covered the possibility of a double pretty nicely, because he's fast with Earthquake, so if Asta wants to double into Metagross or Tyranitar, uh, more likely Metagross, then he's threatening him out while still checking the Swampers. So, nice move there. So... Asta's still kind of thankful for that, though, he may, because Chip on the Gera is really nice for uh, beating it down with things like Skarmory Drillpeck if it comes to it, or even just Swamper one-on-one. -on -one. I don't think he can really afford to switch out of the Gyarados at this point, though. He's... I mean, it depends on his last. If he's got an arrow, now would be a perfect time to switch to it, because Linear's team is not looking that confident against an Aerodactyl Assault. It's very much a prediction game. But, uh, and even then he can be, well, Milotic, the 8% chip on Milotic with Spikes Up actually makes it not confident against Arrow at all. Might just get 2 a KO by Double Edge. It's definitely in Rock Slide danger range. But it's likely that Asta just stays in, and he is going to Ice Beam as Linear goes for the Dragon Dance, forcing Asta on the defensive. Now, we still got Skarmory. We don't know his Gyarados EVs, so, but... Still got Skarmory to chase it down with Drillpeck, but if he switches right into the HP flying here, he could be in trouble. So, uh, because he would only get one Drillpeck off and then he's still in a bad spot. Although, with Swampert uh, still surviving the plus one HP fly, then he would potentially then be in an okay spot. Because if he sacks Skarmory to get one Drillpeck off on Gera, then, then Swampert is going to finish it off with Ice Beam. And he will get Salak while hitting, uh, while being hit by the HP flying, so he would then potentially be able to mess up Milotic or Celebi. So, we'll see how Asta wants to play it. He's gonna go to Tyranitar on Double Edge, so Linear is not running the Rescue Arrow, he's running all-out offensive, so it's gonna be HP flying last, and he's gonna sack it to HP flying to keep Skarm's health high. So the double edge recoil does help because that's more chip for Swamper. So he's recognizing Swampert's health as too important to play around with. And he figured Tar is not going to be as useful. So all we know about the Metagross is that it's leftover. So it could be agility, it could be four attacks. Although it's less likely it has rock slide on a team with Milotic since uh, Moltres is as covered as you're going to get. So agility likely. Uh, especially with SD Pass Celebi. Normally you see Lum on Agilagross, but he w he's using Metagross more as like a defensive Pokemon first, and if he can sweep with Agility, fine. So, especially with lefties from... Uh, with, especially with lefties on it to you be used defensively because he needs it against Tarantar and Snorlax, so good choice there, but I'm still going to say Agility. So, question here, is he going to just drill peck the Gera down? Is he going to go for extra layers of spikes as Magneton switches in? Who is to say? And Linear not using his Magneton at all. He goes to Milotic on the drill peck. And now Skarmory is going to get two layers if he goes to Mag now, but then Linear, then um, Milotic's really going to be down. Or three layers if he's faster than the Mag. So, question is, does Asta want to taunt? on the Milo to keep it low? Does he want to just get all the spikes he can? He's gonna taunt, he wants to keep it low, it's more important than extra layers. Linear goes right to Milo and... You know, he... The reason, instead of going to Mag, is because he saw how little the Surf did. Earlier the Surf was used more to scout out a potential double switch on Magneton, but then he saw, oh it's HP ground, I can't use Magneton to reliably beat it. So, we can make the assumption that maybe he's afraid of Jolly HP ground? or maybe he's uh, with a Timid Mag, or more likely he's afraid of switching Timid Mag into an HP ground on the Switch. So, again, cautious, but still moving forward in the game. So, um, yeah, that, I think that was the reason more so. 
and because Modest Magneton is also quite viable, quite feasible to be afraid of that, but I think he's just more afraid of... He doesn't want to play prediction games about Magneton taking a hit on the Switch. Uh, taking the hit on the Switch, because then he would be in trouble, when he can just go right to Milotic. So, less risk and similar result. Although, Milotic is now going to be really chipped, and he is... So, for Asta's last, which is going to be a cleaner of some sort, that bodes well. As he drill pecks, brings it down, and... He's got to go to that cleaner now, because either he kills himself with Metagross just to take the Milotic down, which feels like kind of a waste, or he lets it heal. I mean, he can threaten Toxic with Bliss, but that's less pressure because Snorlax comes in, he's still got Milo for a sack. What he wants to do is put the pressure on now, and he reveals Starmie, one of the most devastating Pokemon against physical offense. And with Taunt wearing off, because Taunt only lasts one turn in advance, so as you saw, then the turn it last, the first turn, and then the next turn, um, so the turn it was used. And now Starmie is devastating because this Celebi is not well equipped to handle Ice Beam spam because it's not going to run HP Grass, it's passing Swords Dances. It might run Swords Dance Shadow Ball, but it's still got to switch in, recover, Swords Dance, Shadow Ball to actually KO, gives Metagross switch ins. And a lot of Celebi don't run Shadow Ball anymore because they prefer HP Fighting to handle Tyranitar. And so that's what I mean by a lot of movesets, uh, moveset changes, because they also like Recover to stick around. This is an offensive team with two 32 PP Recovers on it, so he's definitely got longevity. And if he, he could also run Leech Seed to keep his team healthier throughout a game, so he's not feeling get, like he's getting worn down too quickly or put into a corner too quickly. But he's also he could also run even something like HP Rock to surprise Roar Moltres, which is pretty popular. So... Uh, who knows? We don't know the Celebi set yet, but what we do know is that the Spike and the Sand and Snorlax is going to be really uncomfortable. Metagross can take a hit and boom, Gera is dead meat. And uh, the last is Mag, which generally dies to Hydro Pump. I will show the Starmie Calc here versus Standard Mag, so just assume zero bulk, and it has a chance to Oko from full. So with the Spike, then yikes. Definitely a KO, and even if he's lefties as opposed to the more popular Magnet, then it's still not in his favor. And uh, what's more is that even bulky Mag, like let's say, the the standard spread for Jolly or sorry Timid would be you know some special defense EVs, but that's still looking pretty dead. So uh, we don't know. And at this point, Asa is just gonna have to. Grin and bear it. He's gonna have to hydro it. He can't afford to dick around too much, especially if he goes to Swampert and it's timid HP grass and he loses it for nothing. And Blissey's at contentious health, so he's just gonna go right for the attack. And he ice beams the Celebi. Beautiful move. As Linear decided, my Lodic is still valuable because it is. It can heal on Swampert and Blissey, and it can stall Celebi out one on one. Or Selby. It can potentially do something to Starmie one on one. Like uh, toxing it down or surfing it down means that Metagross can potentially Earthquake to kill it instead of having to explode, which is enormous. And uh, he can also potentially force Metagross to just blow itself up, which is also useful. So, great move by Asta there to recognize that Linear really wanted that. Milo healthy, and he's going to try to pivot with Selby, or if he goes to Snorlax, it's the same thing as Thunderbolting. So, uh, with the potential for Freeze, of course. But that was a great, great move, and even though the score is 6-4 in favor of Linear, then with Asta's team really, really chipped, then it's Starmie is a great Pokemon to have in this scenario, so uh, it's looking very dangerous right now, because Celebi is in trouble. So he's just going to let it go. He can't risk Snorlax's health. Snorlax is on an enormous timer. So even, like we said earlier, with Blissey's Fire Blast not doing very much damage, 16% as I recall, then even that, which is going to be similar to what Starmie does to Snorlax, is going to add up quickly. And right now it's a real numbers game. However, Snorlax is still immensely threatening because Metagross is in Earthquake range. And... Uh, Swampert doesn't want to switch it, and Blissey doesn't want to switch it, and it just dies. Swampert gets paired and loses, and uh, while Asta can go to Metagross after and gain leftovers and threaten it out and gain more leftovers and switch into Earthquake, it's still not a winning move necessarily because Magneton and 
forced boom. It, he has uh, linear has two waters to force a boom, and because he's uh, definitely so he can sack one and see where he goes from there. But and plus magneton, so it's definitely not something in Asta's favor. He does not want to sack to get in Metagross, but at the same time he doesn't want to uh, go right to it either because. That's also dangerous. So what he does instead is he goes to Swampert and he risks the Slam Para, does not eat it, and now he's in a good spot. Well, no, okay, not a good spot, but he's in an okay spot. He figured, you know what, he's... I don't think he wants to let in Metagross for free. He's been playing cautiously right now, but he can afford to go for Earthquake there because he's not going to Oko star me, but he is going to Tua KO it, and Earthquake Tua KOs... You know, Blissey is obviously not switching in, and Metagross is more important to cover. Uh, so, he knows he's not gonna... So he's... He could Earthquake there, and that's more important. And... Uh, because he doesn't need to Body Slam to deal with Starmie. He can Earthquake and still be in the same position he'd been against Starmie, regardless. Uh, I mean, even if he body slam Para, Starmie just switches out. So, Linear makes the great move and goes for body slam because he knows Asta's is not risking the Metagross. He wants that Para. If Metagross does come in, he is going to risk Para and then he can potentially really be in trouble. So, playing cautiously. But Asta gets the Salic boost from Swamper and now he's in some shit because Gyarados is not coming into the Torrent Hydro. With Spikes and the Chip applied from Skarmory, that's not coming in. Metagross isn't coming in. If Snorlax stays in and gets Endeavored, then he's in huge trouble. So, I mean, he might just, you know, get screwed by Starmie. I mean, the Metagross is still a problem, too. And, in fact, Metagross is in the same position as uh, Snorlax against Starmie. It won't kill but it can 2 a KO, so it's tough to s switch in. The problem is, of course, that Starmie 2 a KO is Metagross, but, you know, one problem at a time. So Asta made a great move. Some people would think, hey, maybe since he's not going to blow up here, I can just chip him down with Hydro, and Asta uh, did not do that because he recognized he needed Swamp er, Starmie's health to not die to a Metagross earthquake. So really heads-up stuff. Great, uh, good switch to the Swampert. So now the question is, is he going to Endeavor? Is he going to Hydro? Hydro is pretty much guaranteed a KO because Snorlax is absolutely 1,000% not staying in. And, uh, you know, if you Torrent Hydro, you Torrent Hydro. And at least you're going to hit it really hard and then Metagross chases it out with Spike. So the Starmie thing is still somewhat alive. But it's it's not switching in. And Hydro with Milotic at such low health and... Uh, Gera and T Swampert and Torrent, then, yeah. So, Milo comes in, he's gonna endeavor, he's gonna play it safe, and that was the smart move, in retrospect. <laughs> so, Asta was looking at it more intelligently than me. I was thinking, why not Hydro? And the question Asta asked is, why not Endeavor? If Snorlax stays in, then I bring him down. If he switches to Milo or Gera, then I bring him low, and then I Hydro him anyway. So, the only advantage Hydro had was... Uh, having two chances to hit it, so Linear decides Milotic's not gonna get an opportunity now that Swampert's at Salic and Blissey doesn't I'm not forcing Blissey in without killing it. So Milotic is not the useful Pokemon here. So he's just gonna Hydro, nothing else can switch in, and Milo has to go down, and now he's gonna go to Metagross. And this is really nice for Starmie because he's deciding to uh, chip the he's sent to preserve the Gyarados which is interesting because he sees that it can still be a threat against Metagross and Blissey and he values it more than his own Metagross so he's gonna go to it which can live a hit but that means Asta is gonna endeavor it down into Starmie range and so I thought until I just remembered that of course the Metagross is agility as we went over earlier <laughs> so that was a lot I mean, obviously, he needs setup presence when he's got the support guys, because you can't be all support on offense. You have to have the actual offense. So he's got the... The lefties are paying dividends here. If he was running Lum Metagross, he would have been in trouble. Oh, wait, no, that was Endeavor, not Hydro Pert. Sorry, I'm, I'm excited and have so many thoughts in my head. So he's Agility, and he's going to be faster than the plus one Swampert with his plus two Metagross, and now he's going to Earthquake. And the question is, what's Asta going to sack against it? Because he's got to go to Starmie after and then play a mind game, but something's going down. 
So is it going to be Blissey? Is it going to be Pert? He decides it's going to be Blissey. Swamper can still uh, endeavor down the Snorlax, so smart move. So, now he has little choice but to go to his Starmie and play an Explosion Mind Game. He goes back to Swamper and Linear blows it up. Great move. So, the question here on this 3v2 situation is what's going to come out because Metagross scares out Snorlax and then Gyarados and it's ugly but Metagross can still potentially uh, it can still potentially be a win if Gyarados can live a Metagross hit plus on the other hand he doesn't know what kind of Metagross it is it hasn't revealed any moves so it could be Asta's patented Thunder, Pol Thunder Punch Gross although Thunder Punching against Meta Snorlax in that situation is deadly Another poke, but the best move here is actually Magneton, because if it if Metagross comes out, it comes out. Now is the time to trap uh, it, and if Starmie comes out, then you know Hydro, it's gonna have to happen now, and it's better sooner rather than later. Well, I, I don't know if it does. I guess in theory you could just uh, no, it needs to be sooner so Metagross doesn't gain uh, lefties, too much left, too many lefties. So, Magneton is the safe switch as Asta goes to Starmie, and he comes face to face with it, making the smart move going to that. Because even if he comes face to face with Snorlax, he's going to have to do that anyway. And the Magneton thing, it's all about whether Starmie wins or not. So, um, yeah, so, sorry, I'm trying to gather the thoughts. So, he's going to, Hydro, Hydro. He absolutely has a Hydro here, it's more about the Snorlax afterwards and the game it's going to play. So, no lefties, it's Magnet Mag, it's going down, that crit I'm almost certain did not matter, and Snorlax is going to come in. Whew, so, rough situation here because, is it going to boom? Now, we're just going to, you can never truly be sure against Snorlax, uh, all you can do is really make approximations, so, it's going to be roughly this calc. So, 27, so, times 2 is 54, and but 32 also potentially, eh, even 2 max rolls doesn't look likely against standard. The more likely lax spread I am familiar with is something like this, which uh, survives, but, and this is for 2 plus 1 uh, modest hydro Suicunes, or hydros from Suicune, and... Uh, not being 3 AKO by Mata Zap Thunderbolt, but, you know, hardly anything changes. If anything, it's going to be less. But the Hydro is... It's threatening a 2 AKO, so, in theory, Ast Linear should be okay, because Gyarados will almost surely beat Metagross, so he just has to beat the Starmie, right? But it depends on the Snorlax EVs, because... He might not have that much bulk, and Asta knows that this is the turn where he has to earthquake, where he can earthquake freely, because he's gonna two it KO it, and he's gonna two it KO Starmie no matter what he does with Body Slam, Shadow Ball, Earthquake, whatever. So he's gonna two it KO it, and um, so this is the turn where he can earthquake. But by that rationale, Linear could also say, "Hey, he." Since he can't afford to go to Metagross here, that's why I'm going to boom. And he Hydros. And it's contentious, and he does Earthquake. So now, since uh, Snorlax does not have that much attack investment, it seems, uh, or rather, it's just not, uh, Earthquake's not that strong, he can't kill it with Earthquake. So he, he has attack investment. He's definitely going to have at least this... 116 because that kills bulkless Doug with body slam guaranteed So he's gonna have around this much, you know a little more a little less whatever But he's not gonna be killing from earthquake with that roll. This is not in his favor to kill in sand So it's now a question of body slam Hydro or is it body slam or you know body slam is going to kill so he's gonna body slam here and Hope for the para on Metagross or is he just going to? Earthquake again, because if Metagross comes in on Snorlax safely, then he will, um, safely meaning doesn't eat Earthquake, doesn't eat Body Slam Para, or Snorlax blows up, then Starmie will win. So, 
Linear is thinking, well, at this point, it's tough because am I going to Earthquake on the Metagross and uh, then I'll blow up the Starmie or what? So what happens is Asta goes to Metagross and he Shadow Balls looking for the KO. He doesn't Body Slam. So he doesn't get the chance for the Para. And now, since Metagross entered on Snorlax safely, then it's going to be forced out and it will be in Hydro Pump range. Uh, so, thanks to the spikes. So he goes to Gyarados, gonna make Starmie hit that last Hydro. Asta blows up to be safe, no Meteor Mash games. And Starmie comes in, it's all down to whether Hydro Pump hits or not. And I'm gonna stop the video here. So happy April Fool's Day. Uh, the game actually did not finish uh, because both players disconnected. I'm kidding. Hydro Pump hits and Asta wins. An incredible game. So, whew, uh, that was really nice. So, some might say, well, couldn't you just have Earthquaked on the uh, Snorlax? Because Starmie wins with Thunderbolt, and then, but uh, as Asta reveals, then Starmie does not have Thunderbolt, so Ice Beam and Recover and Rapid Spin for some longevity. Uh, could also throw in other moves like Psychic and HP Grass in there, but so yeah, now you see that. So, incredible play from both guys. A really, really world class, uh, really astounding stuff. I can't sing their praises high enough. Both were just on fire in this game. This was an exemplary advanced battle. And uh, yeah, this was game one of the series and Asta went on to win the series 2-1. to one. So, um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope this video did something for you. So, I will catch you next time.